My, my name's Tony, I'm one of the mudlarks. I've lived in Waiuku since uh, 1969, and uh, in those days when old seaweed used to be up at the, have his fishing boat, and, and which he lived in, up at the, by the wharf. There was no infestation of mangroves up there to speak of, and you could just sail down, and they used to have duck boat derbies going down to the, uh, to the sand spit, and there would be no obstruction of mangroves. Anyway, since then they've grown up and uh, I've been giving them a hand in the last little while to uh, clear some of them away. And I revel in seeing the, the bird life that's, uh, and, and the fish life that the bird are coming for, the birds are coming for um, in, the, uh, in our cleared areas. Right. When right. we right. work on a pile of on the mangroves, we um, developed a system for this and it consists of of um, uh, cutting them down with a chainsaw, but we cut them below level of the mud. So we go in with a spade and we uh, dig out a little turf of mud just below the level of the uh, just below the level, and then we plunge the chainsaw in, and then we plunge the chainsaw in and uh, and drop the tree, and then cut it into say two meter lengths. The two meter lengths. Uh, uh, we stack those in a in a what we call a cradle. Cradles are is is our invention. It's got um, it's got it's laid over two ropes uh, and supports to hold the, uh, uh, to, to hold the mangroves up in such a position so they they the ropes can be tied on the top. Makes a bundle of about uh, two hundred kilograms. And you haven't got one either, so. Ian will have one. And, um, and, and then we tie the ropes across the top. Whoops. And, and then that bundle is ready for the winching up. I'm Ian Scobie, I'm chairman of the Mudlarks. The, um, the idea of removing all the mangroves from the Waikou estuary is because they've um, enroached on all the um, breeding, the habitat for bird life and fish life. Um, they've choked off all the waterways here and uh, obstructed uh, use by uh, boats, any um, marine craft in here. In fact, at one stage you could you could barely get up to the wharf at Waiuku. So we had to do something about it. The um, the the result of what we have done so far is the 
quite dramatic increase in, in bird populations on the mud flats um, and the fish life has improved. The, the, the fish are the reason why the birds are coming back, plus all the crabs and everything like that. We're all uh, elderly guys that um, re supposedly retired. Uh, the don't seem to be getting any young ones enthusiastic about doing this, but um, we still manage to um, to do our area. We've we've actually increased our output from uh, the previous consent was three hectares roughly per year. Uh, that was over three years. We did uh, just over nine hectares. Uh, in the last 12 months we've done approximately 5 hectares. Gee, that's incredible, eh? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. if we can keep up that um, output, we will achieve our goal of, of clearing every all the mangroves back to the needles. Uh, by doing that, uh, we'll reduce the, the huge um, seed drop that you get from the mature mangroves and um, make the, the uh, clean-up of the seedlings and that sort of thing a much easier uh, task. <laughs> Damn! Yeah, let me take that from you. Nah, you're right. I thought it was stable ground. Yeah, you're giving it the Frank Hagen. Sort yeah, of yeah, British but you haven't got my uh, 85 <coughs> kgs. My name's Graham. I'm one of the mudlarks to uh, help clear the estuary. The um, one of my one of my uh, aims on the barge is that, well, that's not the right word, is it? One of my jobs on the barge <laughs> is winching and uh, we use a little auxiliary Honda motor which um, is roped up to a, what do you call those? The Pulleys. Block and tackle. Block, block and, and tackle, tackle on a, um, a swivel. Oh, Derrick's. <laughs> yeah, Derrick's. Is I'm not really a seafaring man. And uh, anyway, these um, go down onto the cradles that Tony was talking about and uh, we start the little motors and uh, slowly winch them up onto the deck of the barge. Once we've got them high enough, there's two or three of us that pull them round, slowly drop them onto the barge, and then pull them around and stack them in a neat uh, order, making sure we've got a walkway that runs through the barge in case of emergencies. Um, that's one of my jobs. My other job is, uh, when we're in the mud, is picking up the mangroves that have been cut. And uh, one of my jobs is stacking, try and stack them reasonably neat neatly for, uh, for later on when we do lift them up. It's a very sticky process, especially this side of the estuary. You've got to be careful that you don't leave your boots in the mud when you start walking away. <laughs> or fall in. Yeah. Or, or fall over <laughs> frontwards or backwards. <laughs> so, but it's uh, another reason is I um, like to do it because I like to keep fit. And it's one way of keeping your muscles pretty flexible. <laughs> and uh, also I'm not, uh, I'm not doing the chores around the house. Whether you leave that in there or not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How, Dave? Oh, that's not cold. Dave, I got these waders on. <laughs> now you tell me.
when the sun beats down and burns the tar up on the roof And your shoes get so hot you wish your tired feet were fireproof On a blanket with my baby, that's where I'll be Under the boardwalk Out of the sun Under the boardwalk We'll be having some fun Under the boardwalk People walking above Under the boardwalk We'll be falling in love Under the boardwalk So that there's a lot of aerial roots here from the mangroves and um, if you look around here you'll see very very little sign of life because of the um, I presume because it's so dark it's living in here I don't know, I don't know what those black things are there's something from the I don't know what they are but certainly there's a lack of crab holes have disappeared I think <clears throat> My name's Colin Seabert. I'm a retire, retired electrician. Um, I was looking for something to do to fill in the time and keep fit. So um, this opportunity to become a, a mudlark came up and I grabbed it with both hands. I've worked for 10 years on outboard motors. Yes. Uh, for for two, two people. Yes. And I've picked up a bit of uh, expertise by working there and being interested in motorbikes and whatever. Yes. So I'm now turning my hand to chainsaw maintenance. Which so I'm doing at the moment. The chainsaws that are used to cut down the mangroves? Yes. Chain, the, main, the, the still chainsaws that we're using here. Tell us a bit about that. Well, are in, they're working under very adverse conditions. Mud, water. Um, so, yes, they're, uh, they're managing to do the job, but with a bit of help. You've got to keep the maintenance up. It's quite an... It's one of our biggest expenses now, uh, is to keep these chainsaws up to scratch. Well, these are... What's the story with them? Well, they are... That's a... That, that's a... That's a bare cradle. We, we pair them up in line. This, this is a full cradle. That we, um... We tie... The, we clinch these down together with these drops and then we lift from there we lift them onto the barge we float the barge through here on the high tide lift them on the barge and transport them down to the wharf once the barge is loaded we put the uh, little 15 horse Yamaha in it Yamaha outboard that we use on it fits on the back of the barge. We put that on when the tide is high enough that we can the barge will float. Usually push it out to the deeper water till we get enough water to start the motor. Sometimes it is where the barge is, sometimes we have to push it out. To the edge of the creek. Then we head for the uh, unloading area which sometime uh, at the present time is across on Waitoa Street Reserve. Other times is up to the Tamakai Estuary Reserve. I think that's right. Yeah. Tamakai Estuary is the better one. It has a metal ramp, metal down to the ramp. Uh, Waito is only uh, clay, so it gets a bit not usable in wet weather. Uh, 
From there it, it, we have a long rope that long enough to go onto high ground and reaches the back of the barge. Got a bridle on the two hooks to make it uh, we hook onto the drops on the bundles and the tractor reverses back. We have a hook on the front of the tractor that we can hook on uh, a ro that rope. Then it is pulled off up to hard ground. Hooks are unhooked and the rope's unhooked off the tractor. <coughs> then the tractor comes forward, has a front end loader with forks, picks up the bundle and then puts it into the heap where the, we have uh, the untires, un undoing the ropes and pulling them out and then the next bundle is done the same way. When when the the whole uh, bundles that we have done at the time on the tides, which we depend on the tides, because and uh, then uh, that all that those bundles are mulched by a contractor does the mulching. It usually takes about a day and then it is delivered to people who are wanting it for compost or mulchings. Um. Deaf old bugger. No, there isn't. You've been outvoted. Voted by one to one. <laughs> one for and one against. I think they should put it to a referendum. I'll take it to the bloody Houses of Parliament. You go to Brixton. <laughs> well, <laughs> Brixton. Where's the. Uh... Yeah, I think you should go there. There's a bloody woman's prison. <laughs> How would you know? I used to live near it. Oh, okay. <laughs> So we didn't used to live in it. <laughs> well, I'm not saying, I'm not saying. <laughs>